you can go with the traditional uh, you know like this dedicated applications of these these technologies or you can come to the web so on the web front we have something called web vr which is a browser apis this is again still evolving this is also not matured yet so with the help of web vr what you can do is you can smoothly render your 3d content you will also be able to get the data from uh, the virtual reality headsets and the controllers and the trackers and everywhere on the web so that's how you actually use that api and once you have that you know like uh, if your browser is supporting the web vr api then you will be able to uh, create a virtual reality content so that's the second part is this clear to all so we talked about a virtual reality we also talked about web vr which is an api with the help of which you can create content related to virtual reality on the web okay so now when let's say someone knows about okay web vr but if you want to build something on the web vr uh, how many web developers here html css javascript okay so we have around like 50 60 percent of web developers here so for others this might be not very much clear but i will try to be as uh, simple as possible so when we actually develop something on the web so now the first of all the problem is with the with web vr if i want to develop something in web vr is like is it supported on all the browsers web developers ka sabse pehla question hota hai ie mein kaise support denge <laughs> okay so now the problem is uh, usually the browser wall has created this problem that okay something is supported here something is not supported there there okay something which is like very common uh, api or like very common function which i want to use and i deployed it on the qa environment uit or production and then i got to know oh, this is not supported in ie man what to do now so there are many problems like this so the first and major problem with uh, with um, where we are is the browser support so we don't have really very good browser supports yet uh, firefox was the first browser who started giving support to the virtual uh, to the web vr uh, i think just uh, two months ago yeah, in august is when it started giving support to the virtual uh, to the web vr and then uh, the other browsers are also developing very fast on this and uh, this will be pretty soon you know like coming into the picture but again we have the polyfills which is alternative to uh, the support of something in in the web so once we have the polyfills available even if the browser is not supporting with the help of polyfill you will be able to do it but the polyfills are not really great so what you have to do is like you have to actually go then check if the polyfill is working well if something is not working well you have to find the alternatives now apart from this even if you got this problem solved all the browsers okay now you want to start developing in web vr uh, the web vr again uh, has couple of frictions so if someone wants to get started with building something you'll have to uh, uh, get the polyfills update the polyfills then while developing a virtual reality scene there are so many things which you have to take care of so one is like you know there will be one camera which will be having a scene and then there will be the sound effect and there will be some uh, some background thing and there are actually a lot a lot of things which are very complicated and you have to um, deal with the webgl natively and all these things and you have to develop it it actually includes a lot of boilerplate so boilerplate is something like you know uh, a piece of code which you just put here and there with just minor modifications and you have to do it so uh, <clears throat> with help of virtual uh, web vr if you want to develop something this will actually take in a lot of efforts a uh, lot of boilerplate code and again this is not very much beginner friendly so that's when the third part of my talk comes into the picture which is about a frame so a frame is a library javascript library which was built with help of three uh, three js how many of you know about three js oh yeah i see a couple of hands there i'm very happy so 3js is uh, a library which was majorly for the 3d rendering kind of things on on the web so a frame is built with help of 3js uh, natively so um, now what we what you can do is instead of taking care of anything else like you know anything at all like um like i was talking about when you build natively with web you are actually take care of the polyfills and then you also take care about uh, uh, things like uh, scene and then the canvas and then uh, sound and all these things separately you don't have to do anything of this a very native person who wants to build something you know like what you see is what you get kind of thing is exactly a frame so in a frame you just put one line of code to download the a frame library and this will do all of you for the for, for you in the background and what you actually need to do is just take care of what you want to build there uh, so this is one of the examples uh, in this example what you have is you have three objects there okay so there is one sphere uh, one box one cylinder 
okay there is one plane like a triangular plane and also there is a something called a sky in the, in the background okay so that's it nothing else so if you now check the code for this particular thing there will be exactly five lines of code one is for the sphere one is for the cylinder one is for the for the box one is for the plane one is for the sky that's it you just need to write those five lines of code and everything else is taken care of so basically uh, a frame was built to uh, make the the entry of a beginner in virtual reality so in web you are quite easy so now you are a web developer you want to build something on the virtual reality on the web uh, you don't have to take care about those other things just download uh, like you know use this a frame and you will be able to do that so if you see the source code for this particular thing uh Oh, this one. No, not this one. Um, okay. Okay. So this is actually not very uh, visible to everyone, but yeah, I'd like to uh, kind of like you know go through this for you. So <clears throat> maybe you can give me that. So apart from everything else we have, once we are in the body, you actually put this a scene uh, tag. So once we have the a scene tag, it actually takes care of initializing everything else for you. Okay. And in this a scene tag, what you see is uh, just these five lines of code for you. So first of all, you have a box. So in a 3D world or like on a, on a virtual reality website when you want to say okay I have these three objects so what are the basic properties you need for that first of all we have to put it so the first of all with the box I have the position which is like xyz coordinates nothing else then I have the rotation if I want to move it here and there and then I have the color that's it so once I know the color position and the rotation that's pretty much easy so in this particular code even if you are not able to see I'll tell you this, these are the just three major things which are there for all these objects and that's it <coughs> So uh, this is a frame, uh, a JavaScript framework, which is helping the web developers to get into the uh, VR content creation very easily. So you can do your prototyping very easily. Like if you want to build something quickly and see, okay, how it works. So this is it you need to do. You, you don't need to get, take care of anything else. Like, you know, those five hours of installing something and then getting it worked and getting it up and running, nothing like that. So the prototyping and experimentation has become very easy with the help of a frame. Apart from this, there are several other benefits. Like it works pretty much well with all of these latest, like uh, you know, frameworks like React and whatnot. Like all these things which we are working with. Uh, you can also create. Let's say you have a developer friend, sorry, a designer friend with you who works with Maya or let's say Magica Voxel to create the three D uh, related model or anything. So you can create your models and you know, like all these things in your favorite tool or. Um, or what whatever you you are working on with, you can export those objects from there and you can import them here. So uh, one of the examples on uh, the A frame website is uh, is actually showing something like that. So um, okay, it seems like this is taking okay. So what you see this object in the middle? Okay, now this guy is clear. So this uh, a, a person you see here the model. So this is actually created in one of those three D modeling tools, and this has been imported here. So if you go and check the code of this thing, this is one line of code, nothing else. So you can actually take out things from there, and you can work here. So uh, that's about a frame. So does everyone have a good idea about what is a frame? If you have any questions regarding this. Mm -hmm. One question. Uh, I understand the reason why uh, you created the A frame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably my question is very fundamental. As in, like you know, so earlier we used to have desktops and then web, and then you know, people are moving towards mobile, mobile right? Yeah. But is it this not you know backwards? As in, like you know, so because there are some expensive uh, headsets, or like you know, you consumer needs to spend lots of money to buy the expensive headsets. Mm -hmm. so, like, it's a smart idea to like you know provide this VR experience without uh, using any expensive headset. But uh, like, or probably the question is like, how do I, are there any frameworks which, uh, or can I develop the same VR experience for the for mobiles as well as like, you know, 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'll first answer the, the question. Maybe if it is not uh, yet answered, you can ask me again. So uh, when we are creating something like this, first of all, this is not only for the web. This is for everywhere. So, okay. So his question was that we have something like when we are in the virtual reality world, we are actually talking about a frame framework, which is helping you to develop a virtual reality content on the web. On the web means usually you will experience it on your desktop, which is again very backward. Like, you know, we have already moved from desktop to the web and then from web to the mobile and then from mobile to all these virtual reality things like that. So when we have this thing, uh, this is to be uh, to be more clear. This is supported on uh, all your headsets as well. So um, can you go, can you open the presentation again? So in the presentation, you'll be able to see that this is supported on all these headsets so you can actually see this thing and experience and pretty much do everything with this on the virtual reality headsets uh, like you know oculus rift stc vive everything and there are many uh, working examples which are uh, like you know the the deployed things applications which were built with the help of afrm on the vr headsets now, when we come to the mobile phones, yeah, I agree that this is not the straightforward way to create those things. So if you are creating something on the A-frame website kind of thing, if it is there, and if you see it on the, on the mobile phone, this will be not very much effective, but the web apps is something which you can use here. So you can build something in A-frame and then you can port it to the, to the other things. But majorly, if you talk, um, the major consumer which is going to you know like the the upcoming major consumer of virtual reality is going to be the virtual reality headsets and the a-frame is well supported by all the headset ecosystems which means they still need the headsets yeah so it has both the things like you can experience it directly here or you can experience it on the headset as well okay but when i experience it directly here without any headset but it looks pretty much like the usual web app it doesn't look like a virtual reality it won't look <laughs> Because the basic definition of virtual reality has the headset contained yeah, with the that the, you know, this framework uh, is going to solve this problem of, you know, buying the expensive headset. I was under the impression. So, uh, this actually provides a very good alternative to this. Okay. So, what you can actually do is, once you have it in the mobile phone, let's say, uh, not this particular, but I can share you a few, few examples. Let's say there is some particular web, uh, virtual reality scene which uh, has it has a you know like this kind of environment okay and then on the virtual reality i can actually go and print something that's the printer okay and i just uh, just with the type of click on the printer and my document is printed now this is the virtual reality app which is there now the similarly if i have it on the on a, as a website i can open the website here i can just move around my phone here and there and i'll be able to see this and i can type and click that one so more or less uh, you don't actually like once you don't have the headset even though you will be able to do pretty much everything like you can do the interactions you can do the you know like have an immersive experience but not that much immersive as the it's a headset so uh, yeah so uh, but yeah there is one thing to be able to create the content for the web um, you don't have to go through the other way like you can go with a very easy way so this a frame is actually to solve the problem of the content side not the consumer size majorly yeah your question Right, it is augmented. And this A-frame is actually helping there also. So that's what I was telling that, uh, now this is again a broader scope. Okay, so you can actually go and do that one also, but also in the in the virtual world also, you can do things like that. Yeah. Any other questions regarding the uh, basics of A-frame? Yeah. Also? Yeah, sure. So uh, this is like as simple as the other things which I was talking about. So the way we are showing it here, the A box kind of thing. So you will just do like A model or something, A entity, and then you will say uh, something like this, like just SRC equal to whatever uh, is your, uh, like the URL of that particular model and this will be important. Sorry, is it like any kind of you have or a specific setup? I don't remember the exact extensions, but these are all the 3D uh, models are supported here. Right. So the 3D models support the .obj, .obj and .di, collab, collab, and uh, there is a new uh, file format called GLPF, so that, that's uh, compatible with so .any platform. Image, uh, yes, yes, yes. So you can make 3D models using uh, uh, Blender and .any, Maya, .any other things. Blender and tools. Yeah, you can, blend, you can make 3D models using Blender, you can make 3D models using Maya. It's for operations, right? 
what kind of operations will it be? Like if you have taken some aeroplane, okay. and it, yeah, it is flying something. Yeah, you can do that. It also supports physical properties. Yes. Yeah, you can write it, but there also we have uh, uh, examples, period examples. But if you want to write from here, you, you can also do that. So basically, uh, this is just the basic thing which I was talking about. Now you can also fly this space which you have in the sky, and then instead of the this one, you can actually take a take a plane and you can fly that. Uh, so all these um, interactions and all these actions which which are required are available in it. We'll also show you how to import three D models after the. Uh, yeah. Any other questions for airplane? Yeah. Hi, hey, hey, Rajiv. Yeah. So, how quickly is uh, a frame different from a React uh, yeah. PRGS? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, as we speak about the UIDL response, mm -hmm. or it's a frame. Okay. So, uh, there are actually a couple of questions with related to this one because. Since we are talking about a web and on the web we are doing all these things, so definitely uh, there will be questions related to the performance and the responsiveness of this thing. So, um, and uh, also uh, your question related to uh, A-frame versus React VR. So there are a couple of other uh, similar, uh, less popular kind of like, you know, or, or the basic uh, frameworks available out there, but they are not that much evolved. So with, with React VR, you will be able to do the basic things, but not as many things as, you know, uh, this ecosystem is supporting. So yeah, maybe React VR tomorrow might uh, reach at this place and this can also support all these things. So A-frame is also, you know, uh, from the starting, it started supporting the very basic things. And so actually I didn't tell you all the things about A-frame, I just told you the very basic things. So just to give you one more example, A-frame is not a limited language or, or the framework, but it's an extensible framework. So there's something called A-registry, where you can go and register your component there. So let's say you see, okay, today we have a box available, we have a spare, we have a cylinder available, we let's say have a, have a Rubik's Cube available. Okay, so let's say Rubik's Cube is not available because there's not very, uh, very basic thing which everyone wants to use. But you are saying, okay, I am creating a cool, you know, like a very interesting Rubik's Cube and I want to give it uh, to the community so that, so that other people can use it. So I can do it with the help of the A registry. So the ecosystem around A-frame has, uh, you know, like grew really fast and this is quite a, you know, like in a very, a very good state and this evolving very fast, like, you know, the be the, uh, the, the GitHub uh, stargazers or, or other uh, parameters on which we usually measure all these, uh, all these frameworks. Uh, A-frame has done uh, quite well, including the, the, the support for the extensibility and all these things. Um, so yeah, these are the couple of things which are actually making it different from the other similar um, frameworks available today. And when we talk about the, the responsiveness and um, other things, this is actually majorly uh, depends on your browser as well. But in general, like from my experience as such, I haven't seen very much difference between these two. So I'll tell you one uh, one example, like very basic example. So if you have a HTC headset or the, or the Oculus Rift, uh, this is a very good example for the Google uh, um, tilt brush. How many of you heard about tilt brush? Okay. So basically tilt brush is a way by which you put in the headset and you have that particular, the, the setup with you and you have the trackers and then you can draw anything in 3D. Okay. Like you know the kids like to draw things on the, on the paper so they can also do it on the 3D. So I'm like, you know, building a wall and then I have the other thing or I have a cave kind of thing and then, you know, we get into this. This looks very crazy if the person is looking from outside, but from inside this is really very interesting. Like, uh, this very, you know, like this takes you to all different uh, world and like, you know, you'll see here, yeah, this is very good. This is not good. And the other person looking there is like, what the hell is happening to this guy? <laughs> so this gives you very immersive experience. Now the similar to the tilt brush is a painter, which was created in a frame and this works pretty much exactly the same way or like you know from the performance and the speed perspective there's not much difference i i have seen there but yeah when i experience the a-frame in different browsers definitely there, there is some difference and there are some some you know like they're not very uh, very much equal in in the performance so once the um the implementation of webvr library uh, or sorry the webvr api is improved on the browsers this will actually be more effective so i think that We can take one more question and we can quickly take a 10 minutes break. Uh, already we are running out of time. 
So we have some demo as well. So you can take the last question. Okay. So it's a media. It's in the React. Media, media control. Media yeah, yeah, controls like you know pausing the video, and you can increase the sound kind of things. Or uh, does a frame support these kind of media controls like a different components uh, having the media controls? So this is not the, in the basic one, but I I think there is something similar to this available on the. Uh, sorry, on the. Um, extended library, but I am again not very sure about this thing. So I can check and I can get back to you. Yeah. So all the examples are available on aframe.io. Just make note on the website aframe.io. We'll have everything there. So we'll start with ABCDs, the basic ABCDs of WebVR. Okay, aframe. So it's good if you know the fundamentals of web, but the beauty of aframe is. It's also okay if you don't know anything about coding. Okay. Uh, can you see the font? Can you can you read it? The position. Can you read the font? Position, rotation. So let's see how to make a VR scene without coding. Okay. You want to do that, like creating a VR scene without coding? So this is actually not creating, but just seeing, like you know, just a prototype. Hello. Is all okay? Yeah. So this is not about creating something like you know, which you can share with others. It's just about seeing how things works. So my, my first experience with web as such was that there was a website. I opened the website. I go to know about the inspector of the browser, and I went to the inspector. I changed the, the the name and somehow I got my name on the web. And that was a big thing for me. I was like, yeah, I'm on the website now. Like you know, I'm on the internet. Okay. So something like that. Since this is completely based on the web, what you can do is you can actually inspect. You can actually see each and every every component entity of that particular um, A-frame scene. In the inspector, like the A inspector which we are talking about, and then you can change it and you can see how it looks like. You know the way I changed and I saw my name there, so uh, I was very happy with that. So, if you want, you can like you know uh, just change the, the things. Like for example, uh, what just now Anjit did was I think he uh, this is spare. So he's actually you know catching the spare and he's putting it somewhere else. So now once he gets back to the actual scene, he will actually see the. Updated image like the way we do it in the inspector. In the inspector, if we change the name and if we close the inspector, the name will the change name will come. So similarly, now you see here, uh, the scene, the initial scene had all three objects put together, but now they are like like you know just here and there. So this is one of the cool things about a frame. Uh, you can go there, you can change the, the things, and then you can also copy this new HTML which uh, is working well. So. For the people, uh, new people who are working there, if, if something is not working, not working really well, you can go to the inspector. You can make it happen with the help of the the IDE kind of thing. Like what you see there, this this one is kind of like the IDE. On the right hand side, you'll be able to see all the properties related to this object. On the on the left hand side, you will see all the different objects available. Click on any of the object, change any of the property. This will move here and there. Or you can just drag and drop these things. Uh, angle and whatnot. Like everything, what what you want to do here is pretty much available. Like not everything. But all the basic things are available here, so this will actually help you to get to the the exact thing which where you want to reach. Let's say like the way he's showing now is about changing color of something. So this is one of the cool things. Uh, you know, like instead of building something on a black screen uh, HTML, like you know that plain text file, and you are typing there, you can also create something here. You can yeah, you can create a new object here. Let's say if I want to add a new square here of some different color. According to the existing uh, colors available, I can actually click on the plus icon. I can create, uh, you know, in, in, insert a new object there, and I can see that. So I think you got the idea of the inspector. Like this is about kind of like an IDE. You can create the virtual reality things there because if you are doing it on the uh, on the on the file directly, you have to do a lot of calculations and see okay what is the location of all these things. But here you can just drag and drop. So to create a new uh, to add a new geometric shape. So 
So the first step is click on plus button and then select the type as geometry. <coughs> then you have subtypes. Box, circle, cone, cylinder like this. So I added a cone here. So I, I'm not really sure if uh, you know, like explaining everything about that particular scene will uh, be much helpful here. So you can see that small con available there. So yeah, you can just assume like you know any other ID. We have all these options available here to uh, insert a new item, to update, to delete, and whatever you want to do there. Was that any idea? Any questions about AE uh, inspector? Yeah. I can't get yeah. You said that you can uh, import stuff from Blender and Maya. See, uh, those are high rendered images. So how will those work on a web application? And you said that A-frame doesn't require like high GPU. Mm -hmm. So how will those work on this thing? My can you wait for 10 minutes to show that? Can you wait for 10 minutes to show that? Oh, sure. So just to give a quick answer to a question, like any other image, we are going to import it here, but not like a image and then you are doing that. So we're not going to import like an image, but we're actually going to import it like an ent ent entity. So before entering, the browser already knows that this is not a normal image. This is actually a, some high, you know, like uh, definition or like another you know, special image which is which is there. And then the three JS and the WebGL is working in the background to render the page. So I told you the magic of Web WebGL. So the API itself was built to uh, make the WebGL more smooth. And even if it is not a frame, even if you are using the WebGL to render your objects on any other web uh, uh, web page, this will actually work fine without the GPU and all those things. This is the uh, the power of the browser which is giving all this support. So if your browser is supporting WebGL, it means this will be able to render it well. Otherwise, it will like fuzzy and all that. Okay, so uh, I think this should be uh, enough regarding the the inspector. But yeah, this is one of the uh, cool and interesting things which was uh, which was introduced like you know uh, after a couple of months when the A frame actually came to the existence, and uh, this was one of the reasons why many people uh, were able to get into the the web VR and the A frame more easily. Okay, um, was the next thing you want to cover? Okay. So you can see different options there. Like you know, uh, uh, okay. So uh, one more thing I'd like to tell about uh, A-frame is the the way it works. So it actually works on the entity component system. How many of you know about ECS? Okay, I'll not talk about it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, just kidding. So ECS is actually uh, something which which is very uh, well known and well being used in the technology uh, side, and uh, many games are actually built on top of ECS system where we have a component which is a very basic thing. And then whatever uh, property you want to add, that is called a component. So that's how it actually works. So uh, let's not talk about that. But yeah, in general, uh, the inspector has all these capabilities to add the background and uh, to add new objects and okay. So uh, the basic thing with the help of which the A-frame actually works is like, you know, the view from which you are seeing. So let's say when I added a box at 1, 1, 1, which is like 1x, 1y, and 1z, uh, I actually gave it with res reference to a camera. So we also have a camera object uh, available there. And uh, you can uh, you know play with your camera also. So uh, instead of rotating everything from one place to the other place, you can actually rotate your camera from here to here, there, and that, that, that will work. So uh, there are a couple of things uh, like, you know, uh, I would rather not like to go into the details of each of these components available. But I would like to show you the docs uh, from the A-Frame website. So, so the A-Frame documentation is like uh, pretty good. Uh, you can just go there and see all these uh, available components. So what you see here are the core APIs and then these components and then these other things are available here. So you can just go there, you can try out these examples which are given here. You can also use other things like OutPen and uh, Glitch and all these things where you do the prototyping on the web itself and uh, this will work fine. Yeah. So apart from this, uh, I have just one more thing to cover which is about the community of uh, the A-Frame community and uh, how the global A-Frame community is there and how uh, the Indian community is there and how you can get involved with that. Anything else you want to cover before that? 
Okay, so uh, the A-frame, as I told you, this is uh, brought to you by Mozilla, and Mozilla itself is open source organization, so definitely A-frame uh, is also open source, and uh, there are many volunteers who are contributing to A-frame. You can also join them. Uh, there are GitHub issues available. You can go and check and fix them. Or well, you can just you know, start using the, the library, and then you can also uh, help in other things like uh, answering questions on uh, on Slack Overflow, or there is a very active Slack uh, channel for uh, A-Frame, so you can join the, the A-Frame VR community over there. So uh, I'll share you one uh, slide, like one, uh, one place where you'll be able to see all these um, uh, links there, so that you can go back and you can check them. Uh, so that's about the global community. On the weekly basis, we roll out a blog post called a week of A-Frame, A-W-O-A, a week of A-Frame, in which uh, we talk about what are the recent things which came in or the, if you have done something, for example, you conducted this event, so maybe the picture of all of you might come up in the next uh, blog post uh, of, of, of a week of A-Frame. Um, and that's when we, we do more updates, so you can just go out and check that. We also have a uh, Git repo called uh, Awesome A-Frame. So the Awesome A-Frame uh, shows you uh, different projects and different implementation people have done with the help of A-Frame. So it, it includes a hell lot of you know like examples and awesome things which people have done. So you can go ahead and check. That's very interesting. Um, that's about the global community. Now in India also we have something called Web VR India, uh, which is again one of parts of Mozilla India community. So um, this is majorly active on Telegram. So you guys can check out uh, Telegram and you can join the, the group. Uh, not necessarily uh, you have to like you know there's not necessary to have a web app for the telegram you can directly use the web uh, sorry you don't have to have an app for the mobile you can also uh, do it on the web version of telegram which is web telegram and uh, i'll share you the link for the web where india community you can search and join the community where uh, uh, we guys just share our work which we have done and then we also have different contests and uh, many prizes to share and uh, uh, discussions and monthly meetups and all these things keeps happening there. So if you have any questions there, you can uh, definitely join the Telegram group of Webware India. Apart from Webware India, we also have the Slack uh, channel, like the global web A-Frame VR. So aframevr.slack.com or oh, I, I forgot, I'll share the link with you. So that's the place where you can join the Slack channel. So now after you go back from here, there are two major two places where you can now uh, get back to the community. One is the A-Frame Slack community and the second one is Webware India community. Apart from that, you can reach out to us on our mail IDs or anything. Um, and um, yeah, so we'd love to see uh, what you have built. Uh, if you are building, like if you are sharing anything on the Twitter or uh, Facebook, uh, you can hashtag Webware India is the hashtag for uh, which many eyes are watching there. Mm, and yeah, so pretty much it from our side. Uh, if I just look at the, uh, look back at the content, uh, we talked about web VR, virtual reality, then web VR, then A frame, and then how to build stuff with the help of A frame. So if you have any questions related to this, uh, you can definitely catch us after the session. And uh, yeah, once uh, Rajiv gives uh, finishing talk, I will share some context with you. Uh, answering back your question, how to add a 3D model? So you can do it two ways. Okay. So you can do it in two ways, okay? Uh, you can take existing uh, uh, examples and you know, you can go to Visual Inspector. You, you can do it as simply as uh, replacing the file name, okay? So the other way you can do is, So, okay, uh, three formats are supported till now. One is .obj, the other one is .dae, that is called collateral model. 
this new version called dot uh, gltf model so gltf is comparatively more compatible in different ha hardware okay? so all, dot opg or dot a have their, their own limitations but G comparatively gltf is a new technology it's, com it's uh, uh, compatible with more hardware devices yeah. so you can go to the source code you can just simply give the url okay you can uh, May re render an image on Blender, Maya, or any uh, any 3D rendering software. You'll get uh, format dot obj or dot dae. Post it somewhere. Just take the URL and just give it to the SRC, to the source path. That, that. It's as simple as that. Any more doubts on 3D models? How to import 3D models? I think I've answered. Okay, so uh, these are a couple of uh, maybe the uh, few of the links or the context which you might need it after the session. So uh, I have a couple of VR demos which uh, I created. Uh, I also went to a, a conference called Shaw, which is still hacking anyways in Netherlands, which happened last month. So I created one virtual reality tour of that particular place, so you can go and check that one. Um, all these slides which we used are here. Then we have the Telegram and the Slack channel link, uh, and you can reach me on this email ID and Twitter uh, handle. Uh, Ranjit will also share his contact details. Uh, apart from that, I also have my uh, visiting card. So if you if you need, you can maybe like collect it from here. Um, or if you have any other questions, since we are like just four minutes away from closing the session, maybe you can take them now also. Or anything else you want to cover? Okay, so uh, this is one of the examples of uh, virtual reality website, uh, like one of the applications which was developed. Okay, so before that, I would like to uh, take one question here, which I already took like offline, but I would like to share with you. So do you all have a good idea about uh, what kind of headsets are there and how uh, the virtual reality works in the other places? So uh, this was this question regarding um, what kind of headsets are available out there and uh, how does they work exactly so there are two kinds of headsets which uh, which are available um, uh, one is called tethered and other one is called uh, untethered ones so the first set of headsets which you see here is called the untethered ones like they, they don't require a, a laptop to be connected with users need your mobile phone to be put in them and it works fine so can you name all three of them the first one is cardboard. google cardboard second one daydream, daydream yeah uh, third one samsung uh, gear vr okay these three uh, on the latter side are called uh, the tether headsets they actually need a computer to be connected with once they have the computer connected with them they, the headsets have their own display so you connect them with the computer you have the display in that so you'll be able to see what is there. Now, apart from the headset, you also have the controllers and you have the sensors. So you clear this much area, you put the sensors uh, at like, you know, the camera post kind of thing uh, on the two corners. And uh, once I have these trackers, uh, these controllers with me, whenever I'm moving, whatever I'm doing, I'm clicking on with the help of the controller and anything, these are being tracked by the uh, sensors which are put on those uh, sensor posts over there. And that's how uh, they track us, my location, so I can play all these games and I can do like anything I want to do with the, with, with the help of these things. So can you name these three? The first one is? Oculus Rift. Oculus Rift. Second one? PlayStation VR by Sony. And the third one is STC Vive. So these are uh, the, the headsets available out there. Um, what were we talking about? Yeah, so uh, let's say if I want to create a, a virtual tool which I was showing here. Uh, so this is like a very basic uh, example. So what we can do is uh, right now on my computer, I have to uh, use the drag, the dragging feature to be able to see here and there. But if you see this particular link on the on the headset, you'll be able to see uh, this on your on your on in your headset and once you move your head here and there you'll be able to see the all the directions now how the interaction works here like you know the interaction is very easy we do click single click double click we do right click and all these things on the web without interaction nothing is kind of like everything is dead you are just seeing something there so to be able to interact is very important and the way we interact in virtual reality is called uh, gazing effect okay so how it works is like this is let's say the click or uh, the arrow is the, the one where I want to click and I want to go to the next page there. So if you'll observe here, once I move my mouse here, 
you see some uh, some feedback happening in the ring there okay so the way it works is like if you'll open this thing on uh, on your mobile with the help of uh, uh, the links which I shared with you the second link what you'll be able to do is like you'll be able to see that thing so wherever you are moving here and there you'll see the circle in the center so any object or anything you are gazing at for let's say three seconds this will uh, become converted into a click because a click cannot directly happen like if you're just seeing somewhere and this click happens this that's, that's not a good way because you might just want to see something but not click so if you are uh, gazing there for the continuous for some time then that's that's uh, what is converted into the gaze effect so uh, if you go back and check the code for this thing like you can just do right click and you can see here there's nothing much on this page there's just one image in the background uh, there is one ring here attached with the camera and we have this arrow image which is actually uh, changing the, the background. So once I click on the arrow, the background image changes from one place to the, to the other background image and also the arrow changes with the respective place. So if you're interested, maybe we can have a uh, we can have a demo kind of thing after the session, but since we uh, are planning to hard close the session by like 8.20, which is already over, so uh, we're closing it now, but yeah. Uh, if you're interested to uh, learn more or to uh, share more things, we will be here. We'll be here if you are interested to make a virtual tour of your own office. You can stay back. These